Okay, so I'm going to walk you through how to collect the data for the diffraction experiments, both the diffraction grading and the CD diffraction. So I've already collected the data for this diffraction grading experiment, so I'm going to talk through what I did. I've paused the video here at 3 minutes and 53 seconds where I have the setup all ready to go. The laser shines on the grating, we have the diffraction pattern here, I have the ruler on the wall. So I need to make a series of measurements on this frame of the video and plug them into the spreadsheet. Now what I need to know is how big is the ruler on the screen? So on your actual screen, how big is this ruler? And then how far away is each dot from the central maximum? And just to keep things clear, I'm calling this the plus side and this the minus side. So this is m equals plus 1 m equals plus 2, m equals minus 1, m equals minus 2. All right, so I'm measuring this distance, this distance, this distance, this distance, all on my screen, and then I'll use the ruler measurement on my screen as like a calibration, a way to scale into real life. All right, so let me take a look at the spreadsheet. Oh, wrong one. All right, so here's what the spreadsheet looks like. And what we have is already put in the length from the diffraction grating to the wall. So this is stated in the video, 59.06 centimeters. The ruler is 30 centimeters. So these things are in real life measurements. The laser pointers have written on them what their wavelength is. Green is 532 nanometers and red is 655 nanometers. What you are going to enter in is all the unshaded boxes. So the ruler measurement and the m equals plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 minus 2. So on my screen, the ruler was 7.1 centimeters long and the m equals plus 1 was 4.7 centimeters long. So go back to that. So this on my screen was 7.1 centimeters. You'll need to plug in your value and this distance was 4.7 centimeters. Once you plug all of these in, everything else will be calculated for you. So all of these other digits will be calculated for you. So we go from the on-screen measurements to the real-life measurements. So if this was 4.7 centimeters on my screen, what was it in real life? Well, this box will calculate its real-life value using C4, which is the ruler in real life. So you take this number, multiply by this number, and divide by D7, which is the wavelength, uh, sorry, is that right? Oh, D7, sorry, <laughs> I confused myself. Uh, it's not multiplied by the way, divided by the wavelength, it's divided by the ruler's actual measurement on my screen. So we're converting between the on-screen measurement, 4.7 is about 20 centimeters in real life. Okay, so once you plug in these, all of these update, so you have the M values in real life, then we calculate using the inverse tangent or the arc tangent uh, what the angle is. So theta plus one means the angle for the M equals plus one line. Theta minus one is the angle for the M equals minus one line. Okay, and so these should be about the same, these should be about the same, these should be about the same, these should be about the same. Um, because they're symmetric. And then from once you have the angle, you can calculate the D, the, the slit spacing. And these numbers should all be about the same since they're all using the same diffraction grading. So D plus 1 is the measurement you would get of D using the data from M equals plus 1. And then over here we average that. So these numbers are all averaged and we calculate the standard error and then completing the investigation here, we take the D average and convert it into lines per inch. So if the slit spacing is 1,666 nanometers, then that means there are 15,246 lines per inch. 
and then the standard error in that value um, is based on the standard error in this value. They should have the same percent error. Uh, and so our final answer for what this diffraction grading is, I think you can bring it so it's on the screen here. I missed the last part of that word. Uh, so the final answer is that this diffraction grading by our measurements is 15,250 plus or minus 60 lines per inch. Now on the diffraction grading itself, it says 15,000 lines per inch. So we're in pretty good agreement with what it says, what its manufactured label says. All right, so that's the, the diffraction grading data. Now on to the CD diffraction. Oh, uh, sorry, one more point on the diffraction grading lab. Um, I sort of screwed up on the video. Let me fast forward to, where is it, 510? Okay, so I got all five dots into view, and then I checked the alignment, and I foolishly had my shoulder blocking this last dot. So you can actually see all five of them earlier on. So if you go to about 510, you can see all five of the red dots. And just make sure when you get to the red dots, in order to get them all on screen, I had to move the, set, the, um, the setup back a little bit, the, the camera back a little bit. I didn't move the grating, but I moved the camera back, which changes the size of your ruler. So on the, on the spreadsheet, the ruler measurements do change for the red and the green. Okay, so that is it on the diffraction grading experiment. For the CD diffraction, so I'm going to go through one of the one of the um, measurements and then ex explain how I got the numbers that I got and then we'll I'll, I'll do one kind of live here on the on the video so I have it paused when I'm shining the laser down the 15 degree line so this is the green laser shined down the 15 degree line and these are all the diffraction lines coming off of it all right, so the way to think about all of these different lines is to start from the perfect reflection. If I shine it at 15, there's always going to be a reflection on the other side at 15. So this is the perfect reflection. That's what we call m equals 0. Okay, m equals 0 is the perfect reflection of this, according to the law of reflection. So this one is m equals 0. I'm always starting with my incident beam on the right, and the diffracted beams can be anywhere. But I'm always starting with my incident beam on the right. If you, So your m equals 0 will always be on the left. Any line that's to the left of the perfect reflection, the m equals 0, counts up. So this is m equals 0 this is m equal 1, this is m equal 2. So find 0, then you've got 1 and 2. That makes this minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So we have a total of 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, six different diffracted beams here. All right, so find the reflection, the perfect reflection, that's m equals 0. Anything to the left of that is going to count up, 0, 1, 2. Anything to the right of that will count down, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So you locate the beam and you know which m value it is. That's, that's the first step. The second step is what's the angle. So you have to extrapolate. So let's take the m equals 1. If I follow this up, I'm somewhere around here, right? The way that I did this was to actually set a ruler on the screen. So I set a ruler on the screen with, with in line with the beam and tried to estimate where it fell. As long as you're correct, like within five degrees here, then the numbers will, will work out okay for you. So you extrapolate where it is. If it's on the left side, we call that a positive angle. 
So it comes in at 15 and it goes out at somewhere 35-ish degrees. That's positive angle. If it's on this side, we call it a negative angle. So it goes in as a negative angle. So let me show you then the spreadsheet and you can see where these different lines go. So 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. All right, so this is the spreadsheet for the diffraction data. Green and red. We have five trials with the green, three trials with the red. The wavelengths are already put in. This time I've put them in as microns, micrometers. Uh, the angles are, are all set up, so 15, 30, 45, 60, 75 for the green, 15, 45, 75 for the red. Then here we have the M values. So these are the different lines that you might possibly see. M equals 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and maybe minus some minus 4s. Uh, so I put in my M equals 0 at 15. I measured M equal 1 at 36, M equal 2 at 67, and minus 1 at minus 5, minus 2 at minus 25, minus 3 at minus 49. All the data below you can ignore. I haven't done anything with this yet. This is just made up. But this row corresponds to this, right? So any, any line that was on the right-hand side went in as a negative angle in the spreadsheet. Once you plug these numbers in, this will update autom automatically with what the groove spacing is on the disk in micrometers. So you'll notice that these numbers are all about the same, kind of the 1.5 to 1.6 range. That's good, because it's all the same CD, they should all have the same groove spacing. Now to check that you're labeling things correctly, I put this little theoretical calculator box up here where you can put in what, what D is theoretically. And for a CD, it should be about 1.6 microns. So I also have the DVD measurement. Sometimes I use DVDs with this experiment so you can compare the two. I, I didn't do any DVDs this year, so you can ignore that one. But um, in general, a CD has a, a groove spacing of about 1.6. The initial angle I put in is 15 because that was my, my value. And I put in the, the value here for the, the wavelength of green light of 0.532. And then over here, so you enter the data that you want to check over here. And the, the values for their angles will come out on this side, theoretically. So if the groove spacing is 1.6 and you shine it at 15 degrees with a green laser, you should see an M equals 0 at 15, an M equals 1 at 36, which is what we do, uh, M equals 2 at 67, which is kind of exactly right, um, minus 1 should have been at minus 4, I marked it at minus 5, minus 2 should have been at minus 24, I marked it at minus 25 and minus 3 should have been at minus 48, I marked it at minus 49. So you can see the results can come out pretty good. And then when it says like number, exclamation point, that just means that there is no line there. There's nothing that, that you should see in that range or for that value of m. And I didn't. So I actually saw all the lines here in this case. Why don't we do one more? Um, so I'll, I'll fast forward to the, the next one and I'll go through and do that one too and then explain what we do with the D's in the end. All right, so let's see. Let's play this. And so you can see the diffraction pattern here. So 30 degrees. So I'm going to try to follow it down. 30 degrees. Okay. Okay. So that is. Right. Well, that looks pretty good. So I'm, I'm trying to pause it where the lines are kind of extended the farthest because it's easiest to extrapolate. So, first thing I need to do is identify the perfect reflection. I'm shining it down 30 degrees. 
and I get a reflection here at 30 degrees. Okay, so this is the m equals 0, which means I can see an m equals 1, no m equals 2, but an m equals minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 in this case. Uh, so let's check on the spreadsheet to see if that, that's what actually I should be seeing. So I'm still using the same CD, but now I'm shining it at 30 degrees with this same laser. And you'll notice what happens. I should see an m equals 0 and 1, and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. So I can come back to my video and estimate where these angles are. So let me just do this sort of quickly. m equals 0 is, looks to be right on 30. m equals 1 looks to be right on 60. So uh, m equals 0 was 30, and m equals 1 kind of looked like it was on 60. There's no e m equals 2, so I'm just going to put that in as NA. Uh, m equals minus 1. What, did I, what does that look like? So this was 0. That makes this minus 1. And if I extend that up, it looks like about 20 degrees, somewhere around there, maybe a little less. Uh, so why don't I, uh, sorry, not 20. This would be 10. Uh, so why don't I call it 9, 9 degrees. Now notice I'm still on the left-hand side, so this still goes in as a positive angle, even though it's a minus 1m value. All right, now this is, so this is minus 1, this is minus 2. That one looks pretty close over to here. So that would be about 11 degrees on the negative side. We'll call that minus 11. Uh, this would be the minus so minus 1, minus 2, m equals minus 3 looks just a little past 30. Maybe I'll call it minus 31. And then down here, we have just before 60, a line here just before 60. We'll, so we'll call it minus 59. OK. And you'll notice I got data all along here for the different lines that I put in. And the values are reasonable, right? So minus 56 versus minus 59, minus 30, minus 31, minus 9, minus 11, and so on. It looks pretty reasonable. So what you're going to do is do this all for, for all five trials and take all of these different values of D. Now, I, I didn't, there's not a, a, a clean, quick way to do this because uh, sometimes you won't have values. But what you want is the average of all the data in here. So I want to sum up this, this, and that, and take the average of it. So if I, so you'll have to do this somewhat manually, but add up all of your D values and find the average groove spacing of the CD. And um, do that for the green laser, and then you can also do it for the red laser separately, and hopefully you find that they, they come out the same because they're still working on the same CD. Okay, uh, hopefully that makes it clear enough. I know this is a complicated experiment, especially to do from afar and online, but hopefully this will help you uh, figure out what needs to go where and then how do you to, uh, interpret what you're seeing on the screen.